This is tutorial four in MuseScore. Because uh, to MuseScore makes us have a score open at all times, we're going to do this a little differently than we did in the other program. We start out by creating our target score, and then we'll import the MIDI file after we've opened this up. So let's go ahead and we're entering in our information. Uh, it doesn't by default give us a copyright symbol. We'll see what we end up with here, if this actually ends up being uh, the right symbol or not. Okay, um, once again, I'm going to create this as a guitar duet, and we will be in the key of G minor. Right, our key signature, our time signature is cut time, and then we will have one pickup measure. And then we are done. All right, so here we have our score. And so now we can go up and select Open. And I'll go ahead and select Open Recent, since I've already opened this a number of times. And we're going to import MIDI. Um, you have to be aware of this one. If you leave it at 164th, you will get some pretty strange things. Um, usually, uh, 116th is a, is a good place, unless you know it's going to be have smaller note values than that. And as you can see, this brought this in. Um, it did something very strange, though, and I don't understand this. Um, uh, for some reason, it has this in two different keys, uh, with two different key signatures. We're not going to worry too much about it, but it is kind of odd that it did that. Um, and we do have a couple of misspelled accidentals because of it. All right, so I'm going to select this and copy it and move into our Gavotte score, and we'll paste it in there. And uh, it fixes the, it doesn't mess with the key signature anymore, but we still have some wrong notes in here. Um, all right, now we, we do have to do the octave transposition again. And so we'll select that staff and transpose, and we're the, right now transposing by interval down a perfect octave. All right, so now uh, this looks pretty good, except that we do have one note that's out of the range. Um, it is possible to have a drop D tuning on a guitar, but rather than do that, let's go ahead and change the entire key. Let's pose up to A minor. C or A minor. Oh, okay, that's better. I must have made a mistake in the last one. All right, now we're looking okay, except that we've got some accidentals that are, are incorrect. We'll go ahead and fix uh, this one here particularly bothers me, so let's go ahead and go up here and select Pitch Spell and change that. And when I selected the one, it seems to have uh, adjusted almost all of the others, too, at one time. So that's kind of a nice feature. It, it took care of it really quickly for me. Um, all right, so now we've got this, so let's go ahead and address our form. Uh, we'll start out by grabbing some bar lines, and here's our repeat sign here. And our form is AABA, -A -A, so here's the end of the A sec first A section, so we would put a repeat here. Now this measure, then, is the beginning of the repeated A section, so we have to find where that ends. And it looks to be right about here. And I missed. There we go. There. And so we'll go ahead and delete those measures. Now, there are a couple of ways to, to do this. Now, if I press the delete key, you can see that it only takes out the notes and it doesn't take out the measures. So if you want to take out the measures, you have to go up and select delete selected measures. All right, so that's good. So now we could go in and add our lines that we'd like. We can get our first ending here. And then we can add our second ending right after it. Now, I'm finding that I cannot nudge these with using arrow keys, and that makes it a little harder to line things up. But it's it didn't not too bad, but it was a little trickier there. Okay, all right. So now we have our section here, and now we have to see where we start over again. And it looks like it's right about here. So we're going to. Select here again. That'll be our last measure. And so here's our first measure. And we can go ahead and select it here. And we're going to delete those measures too. All right. So 
Now what we need to do is we need to separate these two. And in um, MuseScore, the way to do that is to use something called a horizontal frame. And so we're going to insert a horizontal frame. And when we do that, we get this measure um, that looks kind of strange. Um, it's much too small. And the problem with it is, is that um, it's really a new system that's on the same line as the previous system. So what we have to do is we'll have to go up to our general, edit our general style page and get rid of this um, last system fill threshold and turn that off and you can see that now it spreads things out just a little bit. Okay, I want to hide these two names so we'll set those to invisible. And there we go. Okay, all right, so that looks pretty good actually. Um, but it, it's a little crowded here, and so I think I'm going to change this um, and go ahead and add some uh, breaks as well. And so we'll put in some page breaks so that it will give us an extra system on the page. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's see, I think we'll put that there. Oops, no, get rid of that. And you can see now we have another system, and so... Okay, that layout is pretty good. I think maybe I should go back one. Let's undo that. Get rid of that. And uh, yeah, that looks better. All right, so now it looks layout is looking pretty good. Um, Remember, MuseScore, when you create things, does not automatically create brackets, and it doesn't automatically extend the bar lines, and so you have to do that manually. Um, so brackets, we need a bracket here. And then you double-click it to edit it. Drag it down. And the same with the bar lines, we double-click to and drag down does some crawling and so that looks nice okay I'm very happy with that look um, all right so now the next thing we need to do is add in our articulations and dynamics and phrasing um, it does this in a, in a little different way than some of the other programs um, slurs are the same as in Sibelius just click on the note and then press the S key and it'll give you a slur now the, these are not as the slurs are not nearly as beautiful as they are in the other programs, um, at least not on the screen. And so putting these in is really the same as as any of the programs. Um, I'll actually go ahead and print this one out and decide if I like it. You know, I think this would be a lot easier if this was bigger. Yeah, how about if we do that? Makes it easier for you to see it too, right? And again, I've planned this all ahead of time, so I already know what I wanted to do on it. Um, MuseScore does not play back dynamics and articulations at this point. So we won't worry about that, and there. All right, and so now with the articulations, um, I want, I'm going to make these all staccato, and so here's the articulation window over here. Double click it, and it'll place them on, place them in the right place. All right, so we can kind of work in the same way here. We're working together. So it's fairly quick to enter this.
Oops, I don't want that to be a slur. I want it to be staccato. All right, so now I've got all of those in there. Um, oops, lost my window there. Okay, let's go back to 100%. And all right, so I did this in a slightly different order than I did the other programs, but um, now we need to add in our repeats, which only takes a short period. We need a DSL coder right here. And move that there. We need a coda here. And again, quite automatically put it where I'd like it. Um, I think the code is a little small, um, as I also think the sign is a little small. Uh, I have to look and see if maybe it's possible to change that in the engraving style. And then we need a two coda right here. And we're done. Oh, not quite done. Um, let's, uh, we have to add in our dynamics too. All right, so our dynamics. Um, I'd like this to be mezzo forte and mezzo piano. So first time mezzo piano, second time mezzo forte. Um, to create the other, uh, to get this dash in here, I found the easiest way to do it was to use symbols and then just scroll down until I found the, s the symbol I want. And this is actually a tenuto mark, but it fits fine, does, does the job. Okay, and so that's there. And then I need another dynamic here. I want to start from a mezzo piano. So we'll put that to there. And we will go to a forte right there. So we'll, and then right here, we'll put in a piano. And then finally, I need a line. I'm going to enter in first a crescendo here. Double click it to edit it and drag it out. And then I want a decrescendo here. Uh, so I'll drag that in. Now, I actually wanted my decrescendo to start here, but um, it does not do automatically break them, so you have to put in two. So I'll put in another one right there, too. And there you have it.